watch what happens here, especially right at the bottom where my I'm sitting. Let's move out of the way. I'll just double click on NC and double click there. It did its thing. Elastic security stopped us. So what happened? So recently I noticed that in the wild there's a zero day exploit. Well, there was, it's now patched, but this affects WinRAR. So I was wondering how can we exploit this? Can I, as an individual is trying to learn in my lab, replicate this exploit? And if I can, are there ways that I can defend against it? So in a quest to learn, I went ahead and replicated this exploit here in my lab environment. And you're going to see here in a little bit, we're going to attack a victim machine. And we're also going to try to see if we can do some detection using something like Kali Purple. So let me show you. When everything is said and done, I went ahead and I created a rule that detects the zero day attack that we, I showed you earlier. So I highly encourage everybody to go and read about this WinRAR attack. So pretty much what it does is when an attacker packages a zipped file, a RAR file, the victim, all they have to do is double click and that file that they double clicked would execute whatever the code that the attacker put in there. So that's what we're going to do today. So in order for this to work, we start with our attacker machine. This is going to be our Kali attacker that is going to be attacking the machines. We also have a victim machine. My victim machine is actually a Windows Dell uh, laptop right here. So this is our victim. So we have a victim with the attacker. What's missing here is the defenders. And I have Kali Purple. I show you on this channel how to set it up. So if you're interested, check the series and you can set up your own Kali Purple lab that looks like mine and you can follow along. But we have Kali Purple Sim here. And this is going to be where not only do we get the data, but we also create an alert. So I'll show you how I created one because I couldn't find a pre canned one. You need to go to GitHub. There is already a proof of concept from two weeks ago. And this POC here will show you how to generate the WinRAR exploit, exploit. So I went ahead and cloned here. So just copy and go to your attacker machine. I'm just going to do a git clone. Check what's in here. So first they have a script.bat. This is what we need to modify in order for us to have a successful exploit. Then they have the PowerShell script that's generating it. And here's a cover file. Um, so we can just do a Python. We need to point to, according to our usage, the file, our bat, and the resulting file, final file. So let's check the script.bat. Notice that script.bat is just launching calc here and a PDF. Okay, let's just not made, modify too much and just generate the payload. And this is going to be giving us a file called calc1.rar. That way we know that this file is the one that generates calc1. So let's copy calc1.rar to temp was I need to move it to my victim. We can email this or we can just, uh, in this case, I'm going to use SCP. But remember my victim has antivirus running. So if I go to the command line, I can say, hey, SCP. Hey, SCP, can you uh, sign in as root to my Kali? Calc 1.ra and I like it here. password for my Kali and calc one ra is now in my documents folder. Okay, so in my do documents, you notice that I have calc one here. So you might be wondering, how do we know which version of WinRAR? Because I haven't mentioned that. So at the beginning, you need to go and download the correct version of WinRAR. So you need to do this, like WinRAR downloads. Go to the downloads folder and Copy one of the links for 64 bit. So you copy link address. Notice that um, this is 623. 623 is now the latest version. Obviously, it's not going to work. So we need to go one down. So 622. And there is no direct path to download this. You need to download it by just manipulating the URL, replace three with, with two. And when you do that, you end up with WinRAR that's downloaded. So let's go ahead and run it. Install. 
Okay, so that version now that it's installed, we can go to our victim and we have calc one here. If I double click this, it should execute the calculator. Okay, thank you for that. And here's the calculator. Great. So Elastic Defense is running here. So I have an Elastic Sim, Elastic Agent that's collecting all the logs and sending them to my Sim. So that event, the way I executed calc.exe was recorded. But as you know, calc.exe is not a big problem, right? So I'm going to see if we can up things a little bit. Instead of using this file here that they're calling script.bat, I'm going to say, let's modify it a little bit. In this case, I'm going to use PowerShell and use wget module for it to download Netcat64 and output it to a file called Netcat64. But I'm going to just mess with defense by just executing Netcat without any uh, things. Assume this is our virus, or we can generate a virus. But for now, I just want to use a heavily signatured file so we can see if we can get it there. And how do we know that we'll get it back? If we go here, we can. We already have netcat.64. So we'll host it using Power, uh, Python. So what should happen is if our script runs, we should see it reaching out to us trying to download the file then we know that it ran and elastic defense should stop it then we can go to the defense side of things because we would have verified that this indeed works so here's what we're going to do we we'll name it rev and instead of calc we we'll name this one nc.ra now let's copy nc.ra to my temp because it's easier with scp then let's get it to the victim then I can say nc.ra, give them my password. All right, now if I go here, I should now have neck. Watch what happens here, especially right at the bottom where my I'm sitting. Let's move out of the way. I'll just double click on nc and double click there. It did its thing. Elastic security stopped us. So what happened? Well, it saw the hash for Netcat. I'll show you when we go to the defense side in a little bit here, but that's what got detected there. It wasn't the execution of WinRAR. We'll also in a second work on how should we detect that. Uh, I'm a very terrible at detection. I'm a red teamer, but I can show you what we can look at, if, especially if you want to just get started. Okay, so we know that we reached out to our Kali we downloaded netcat and it got blocked so what happened with defense forget the zero day the zero day we know that it, it works now let's go to our machine kali pepo this is where we do all the defending first let's understand why netcat got uh, picked up why when we uploaded a file it got picked up then once we do that then we can generate a, a rule okay so the malware prevention alert that fired, it was this one. So let's see if we can find it here on page two. Okay, this is the malware prevention alert that triggered. I'd like us to analyze this. We know that it was a malicious file called netcat that was used we got it using wget so that's the first thing that we did there we put the wget command to get the file and it thinks it's malicious um if we go down here the file hash is right here let's put it in virus total that's a simple thing that we can use for virus total in google you just go to virus total and search for the hash for that netcat file that i intentionally uploaded you notice that it's lighting virus total a lot so that's probably one reason why we got caught just trying to execute a binary of netcat so we know that that detection was for this file so how can we ensure that we also detect the really really bad thing that we did with winra let's just choose the, the last 15 minutes so that this is faster i'm going to show you that there's an alert here called winra zero uh, zero day alert 
this was not in here. I created to create for I had to create this alert. So if you see that it ran four times in the last 15 minutes, probably because I played with it a little bit. This alert here, I created it by doing this. First, I was I didn't have any alerts, so I was like, let me go and find out if what kind of traffic did I see that included the word ra star. You cannot do this in a big environment. This will be a huge query that might break your sim. But I have a lab environment. I can put things like this. I was like, I just want to know where, which files contain the word ra. And I saw something like this. And here we are now in the engineering part where we need to come up with a rule. I'm like, okay, what did we see with a ra file? Okay, so when I looked, the first thing that I saw was file.path was this path here, which goes to user, updata, local. And this is very consistent. Every time you execute the winra stuff, it will execute in the updata local, and then it will create a ra with a dollar sign, and then a random value that defined the ra file. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, great. So if I see command line or PowerShell being executed after the parent process was a, was started by a file that was maybe in updata for a person, command line is, or PowerShell is executed, and then it also calls command line, then something's up there. So that's how I came up with the rule. And then all I needed to do was come in Elasticsearch, hit the create rule button. I'll just edit this one. You create rule button will look like this. And then I put the commands that I'm looking for. If the process command line contains ra with anything, dollar sign. And also if we call command uh, CMD, I can also add PowerShell here. And in the arguments, if that came from updater, I mean, that's way too many things already matching. You know, starting from updata, we open a raw file and we open a command line. I would like to know about it. And in this case, my rule was named something silly, zero day raw, but you can name this rule something more interesting. And I'm sure other defenders out there can improve on this rule, but I needed something. So that's the rule that fired. And when we come back here, you notice that we now have a winra zero day alert, and that's how I detected it in here. I also saw some Sigma rules that were shared online that looked at winra. So let me show you. All right, so I found this after I had created my rule, which also shows me that I'm in the right path. And these people were looking for something specific here, like image data. They were looking for an executable, but the same raw stuff coming from, in this case, they also added temp, local, and updater. So I can actually improve my rule by adding this here. And this rule uh, was actually referenced in one of the documentations that I was looking at. So that's how we exploited WinRa and also detected it. Let me know in the comments if there's something that you like to see. And also, if you like this type of content, like this video, subscribe. I really appreciate every single one of you subscribes. And I hope to see you next time as we keep learning.